Another boss character that I really liked in fighting games was Magneto in X-Men Children of the Atom. Back in 2007, I did a small guide video about him, and as I look back on that video, there were a lot of things I left out. So I'm going to redo it and cover as much as I can about Magneto in this game. The reason I like this version more than any other game he's appeared in is because his mutant powers are in full display here. Unlike the other games, where he's mostly air dashing to do infinite air combos. Now let's have a look at Magneto, the final boss in X-Men Children of the Atom. The first thing we should look at is when the match starts, look at Magneto's super meter. He has the ability to automatically charge it without fighting. But of course, attacking and doing special moves will speed up the process, giving him access to his level 2 and level 3 abilities much more often than other characters. When a character is not moving, this is their idle animation. Magneto's animation has a cool multi-shadow effect under his hands. This might have been inspired by a scene in the movie Fist of Fury from 1972 with Bruce Lee. You can see it certainly does look similar. Next up are his standing normal attacks. This is his weak punch, then his weak kick. The medium punch button is a fierce punch attack. Now in later games, he would get a new medium punch animation. Then we have his medium kick. Then here is the fierce kick button. And last is the fierce punch button that activates his special move, the EM Disruptor. In future games, this move would have proper inputs for half circle forward and punch. Next up, let's crouch and do the same attack buttons so you can see what they look like. Here is the crouching weak punch. Next up is the crouching weak kick. Then crouching medium punch. Then crouching medium kick. And then crouching fierce kick. Crouching Fierce Punch hits multiple times and it launches for an air combo or a juggle or some other setup, whereas Crouching Medium Punch only chains into other normal attacks. Alright, let's look at his jumping normal attacks. That's Weak Punch. Next, let's do Weak Kick. Next one is Jumping Medium Punch, which activates the EM Disruptor Special Projectile, but it does not come out if you do it too late on your jump. The trick here is push medium punch around the peak of your jump so the full animation comes out and completes. Next up is jumping medium kick. There we go. Then let's do jumping fierce kick. All right. And the last one is jumping fierce punch, which activates another special projectile, the aerial wave. So in future games, the inputs for this actually got changed. But in this game, it's just jumping in the air and pushing fierce punch. Since the aerial wave projectile is activated by pushing a single button, it has no special inputs. That's why it can be cancelled during its animation into other special abilities. Magneto has two throws. Forward and medium punch will place a tempest cloud on the enemy. This will stun them for about two seconds, but they can break out faster by mashing the directions left and right. Once the animation starts, you can hold left, right, or up to throw them in that direction. It depends on where you want to place the enemy. This gives you some sort of stage control or just to buy you some time to plan another attack. You have the option of hitting the opponent as you throw them away or if you want, you can wait for the enemy to be placed further away than dash in for a combo. Even the up directional throw can be used as a setup for an air combo in the corner. His other throw is forward and fierce punch. You can throw the opponent up into the air ahead of you on the floor, or right below you. You can follow up with an attack that hits low for some extra damage, but the opponent can roll away upon their wake up by pushing punch or kick at the right time. The inputs for the EM pulse attack are quarter circle forward plus medium punch. It shoots a barrage of projectiles in a three-way pattern and shocks the enemy on hit. It covers a good portion of the stage horizontally, but one unique attribute is that it has some slight tracking abilities. It's not perfect, but the shots will attempt to track the enemy if they jump or if you jump. The EM Disruptor is used by just pushing Fierce Punch. In later games, this would have normal inputs like any other special move. But one special thing about it in this game is that it can be cancelled any time during the animation, 
either before it hits or after it hits the opponent, you can cancel the animation into other special moves or super abilities. It's best to let the attack hit for some damage, then cancel into another special move. This gives you a chance to start another special attack or a super move before the EM Disruptor animation finishes. Magneto can fly in the air for a certain amount of time. It requires Super Meter to be at level 2 or higher to activate it. The inputs are Quarter Circle Back and Weak Punch. You can cancel the flight by doing Quarter Circle Back and Medium Kick. Now cancelling the flight does not use any meter, but activating it does. You can still air block while flying, but if you are hit while flying, Magneto stays in flight animation until it wears off or you cancel the flight ability. It normally will last around 20 seconds unless you cancel the flight manually. The inputs for the Hyper Grav Special Attack are Quarter Circle Back and Weak Kick. It spawns 4 projectiles that track the opponent very well. They are unblockable, but deal so little damage. Upon hit, it pulls enemies towards Magneto for a free attack. They will only last a certain amount of time until they disappear. You can try to super jump over it and get on the other side, then dash away. The downside to this special attack is it has a long animation and Magneto is very vulnerable. If you hit him fast enough, it will cancel out the hypergraph projectiles, so the best choice is to just hit him quickly before the projectiles start moving towards you. The inputs for Magneto's taunt is quarter circle forward and fierce kick. In future games after this, they start to put the player's taunt animation on the start button, but in this game, it really has no big purpose, it's just a taunt and that's about it. The special move called Magnetic Tempest is a quarter circle forward motion with weak punch. It builds meter but leaves you vulnerable during the entire animation. It only serves one real purpose and is connected to Magneto's level and nowhere else. And that's the next part of this guide. Magneto can do a blue shield with two different inputs. That only works on his own stage and it does not build meter. The inputs are quarter circle back medium punch and quarter circle back and fierce punch. This will rotate the stage to reach the lower sections of Avalon. There are a total of four areas you can travel to. Medium punch will go in a clockwise motion, while the fierce punch version goes counterclockwise. This can also be done in the air. This move can only be done when you reach a level and it has stopped. You cannot do this between levels as it shifts through. It does not matter which one you use, but once you use one of them, continue to use that version until you reach the room with the rocket in the back. I also want to point out that Magneto is completely invincible during the entire animation of this move from start to finish. If two Magneto players use this move about nearly the same time, the stage will sometimes change diagonally. The use of this move is to reach the lower section with the rocket in the background. In this area, one of Magneto's moves becomes more useful. Magnetic Tempest now has a new effect in this area. You'll see Magneto rip metal off the rocket in the background. You can then launch these pieces by doing quarter circle forward and medium kick. Not only does it do really good damage on hit, but it also has pretty good chip damage on block. Magnetic Tempest and throwing the metal can both be done in the air. There's a certain amount of metal pieces you can grab off the rocket. When those sprites are used up, Magneto pulls in metal from the lower section of the stage. This is also the only stage where Magneto can control metal pieces. If you hit Magneto or throw him, when these metal pieces are in the air, he loses control over them and they disappear. Or you can also destroy the pieces by hitting them individually. Either method can work out, but just be prepared to block as you might still get hit by a few of them if there's any left over. The metal pieces can be grabbed as soon as the second level starts shifting to the third area. You don't have to wait to reach the bottom part all the way. And if the metal pieces are in the air, Magneto will lose control of them if the stage starts to shift to another section. Here is how the four sections of this stage are split up. You start on the top right, and from there, you decide which way you want to switch stages to reach the room with the rocket. Either go left, then down, or go from down to left. When your super meter is at level 2 or above, 
quarter circle forward and fierce punch activates his magnetic force field. You can also call this a shield or a barrier. When the force field is active, Magneto will not auto charge his super meter. He will have to get his attacks blocked by the enemy to build meter or perform magnetic tempest. This is some way to balance out his extreme power for a short amount of time. Because if he did have his force field and he could still auto charge, that would be way too powerful. Magneto is invincible to all attacks, grabs and super grabs. He does not need to block during this. He can move forward and attack. It's basically absorbing the damage from every attack. But for having such a good force field, it does limit him in some way. As I said before, an active force field prevents him from auto charging his meter, which forces him to do something to build meter. He also gets a larger hitbox, which prevents him from getting too close to his opponent to throw them. So it seems like Magneto cannot grab you when his force field is on. The other limitation is you can only activate it once per round, and if it does not take any damage, it will last around 13 seconds. It's much better than the so-called super armor because it does not slow him down. He can walk through any super attack, dash through it or jump out of it and take no damage to his health. His magnetic force field is a very powerful ability in this game. You can remove the force field off Magneto much sooner by hitting it. After enough damage, it goes away. You just have to pick the right time to attack and what method you will use. Magneto's ultimate super move at level 3 is the shockwave. The inputs are quarter circle forward and weak kick. The pillars have to travel across the floor and it covers a good portion of the screen. If you perform a super jump, you can see that the height of the shockwave reaches the tallest part of the stage. You can either block it, use a teleport, or a move with invincible frames to avoid it. Keep in mind that teleport moves do require super meter at level 2. If you don't want to use meter or risk getting hit, then just block it. The shockwave frames are not all active hitboxes. There's a tiny gap in between the animation that does not hit. If you can time it just right, some moves will go through that small gap. If you can move fast enough and get the right timing, you can actually run through the shockwave. It's not the best choice to avoiding it, but this is definitely a cool thing to see if you can pull it off. I have not tested this with every character, but it is something that can be done. In later games, Magneto would be nerfed or balanced to a point where his powers were not as strong as they were in Children of the Atom. For example, in Marvel Super Heroes, his shockwave height is reduced by half of the screen. His force field was taken away as a super move and could only be used by activating the space gem. It now lasted around 9 seconds, but still absorb damage until it wore off. Damaging it would break the force field sooner, just like in Children of the Atom. His magnetic tempest would no longer pull in pieces of metal, but it was replaced to being a super move that threw tempest clouds. He lost the ability to air block while flying, just like other characters in future games. I guess to make all characters more balanced in a way while they're flying, which kind of makes sense, his hypergrav attack became slower, had less tracking, and it could now be blocked. His EM Disruptor now became a proper special move input by half circle forward and punch. In X-Men vs Street Fighter, his shockwave height was increased to almost reach the top part of the screen, but could still be avoided by a properly timed super jump. The Magnetic Tempest super move now shot out multiple shards of Tempest clouds in random directions. Also in this game, he was given a special move with the shield animation from Children of the Atom. You know, the move that shifted levels on Avalon so you can reach the lower area where the rocket was to control metal. It now became a counter move but only to physical attacks. If properly timed, enemies would take damage while getting thrown back. The final animation of this move would show a few frames of Magneto's original magnetic force field. And that's it. That covers everything I could find about the boss version of Magneto in X-Men Children of the Atom, which to me still remains as his most powerful version, simply because his mutant powers were shown correctly. He is supposed to be a powerful mutant after all, and this is the only version of Magneto that I ever really enjoyed playing. 
And if you're wondering how to select Magneto in this game, well, it's via a game shark. You have to access the game's code and change a bunch of numbers around to select him and Juggernaut. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. This is Carlos or Acid Glow, and I'll see you in the next video.